Sales are down as expected, and prices are up in all market segments. Well, except for one, and most likely one that you didn't really expect. If you're looking to hear about the Massachusetts real estate market data for the month of February for single family homes, condos, and multifamily properties, then you're in the right place. Two months in the books with 10 more to go, and already there are some interesting trends to talk about. Hi, I'm Jeff Chubb. I'm a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent, and I've sold more than a thousand houses. And I'm one of the state's top agents. If you have any questions about real estate, well, then I'm here to help. Let's start with single families. In February of 2023, we saw 1,699 single family homes sell for an average sales price of $653,000 compared to February of 2022, which represents a year over year decrease in the number of sales by 22.8%. This is in line with my expectations for our marketplace. Now, compared to February of 2022, home prices were up by 3.5% year over year. That was higher than my expectations expectations. It's the continued story of boy meets girl. I mean, sales were down, but prices were up. The sales levels of February 2023 were slightly above the level of 2011. This has also become more of the norm in the last six months or so. So no surprise here. This is all our normal. The year over year sales comparisons are going to continue to look awful for about another six months or so. It's like comparing a Rolls Royce to a Cadillac. Cadillac, it's a fine car. Heck, I own one, but it's no Rolls Royce. 2021 and the first half of 2022, those were uh, Rolls Royces type of years. Should I take this time to point out to all the doom and gloomers that prices didn't go down? Eh, I'm gonna wait until later. So with the decrease in sales activity, we've obviously seen a huge surge in inventory, right? Yeah. So that's a hard no. Year over year inventory has increased and we have 812 more units on the market today than we did February of 2022. But that's still the third lowest in recent history. And you can see from this single family inventory chart that the inventory levels in 2023 have been shrinking and have been closing the gap between 2022 and is right there with 2021. The story is, and it's gonna to continue to be all about inventory levels. As a comparison, to the last time sales levels were in line with what we're seeing today, home prices actually increased by 0.41% in 2011. This makes our 3.5% increase look pretty darn good. And the reason why has to do with inventory. Inventory levels in 2011 were 673% higher than they are today. In case you missed that, 673% higher. So what does all of this mean? February was exactly what I would expect. It's 100% in line with our new very sustainable normal. For my market bear friends who continue to wait for a price correction, this is one more month of prices not falling. It's one more month of inventory not surging. It's one more month that waiting on the sidelines cost you. I've said it before, but it's worth repeating. You can't have price corrections without a surge of inventory. This is what has made our market so different compared to the many other markets in the southern part of the country. To check in with my prediction for 2023, I said that our market was going to be flat. The three and a half percent year over year increase in prices well it's surprising but it's not enough to get me to move off my prediction as i do think there are some headwinds that are rising ahead of us this market it's fragile with such low inventory levels the market can't handle a huge uptick in sales my biggest worry is wrapped all around interest rates the real story of february of 2023 is that the inflation data came out and this inflation data squashed pretty much all hopes of rate cuts later in this year interest rates aren't going down anytime soon. All in all, two months down, and I have to say, it all looks pretty good. So on to the condo market. But first, if you're liking hearing about the Massachusetts real estate market, then please consider subscribing. And I can't tell you how much I appreciate you smashing that like button as it makes a huge difference with those YouTube gods. Now in the condo market in February, we saw 825 units close in Massachusetts for an average sales price of $601,000. Wondering which market was the down one? Well, it here it is. The condo market was actually down as expected on on sales, but also on pricing. But there is a weird trend with the condo pricing that we're gonna talk about shortly. Sales were down 24.7% year over year in February. This was as expected and right in line with the 24.8% sales decrease that we saw in January. The sales levels were equal to February of 2012 when 810 condos sold. In 2012, we sold a little more than 17,000 units with the condo market appreciating by 3.6%. Prices were down by 3.2% in February year year over year, but check this trend out. Prices were up 4% in October of 2022, then up by 8.1% in November. 
to then be negative 2% in December, year over year, then up 8.8% .8 in January of 2023, to now fall by 3.2% in February of 2023. That is one heck of a roller coaster ride so far. I wish I could give you some magical reason as to why, but the only thing that I can pinpoint is an outlier with a huge condo selling that just helps push up that average pricing for the month. That is my only explanation, and it's not really a great one. From a sales perspective, this marks now 15 months of consecutive year-over-year -year sales decline. Again, this is to be expected and something that we're most likely going to continue to see until the mid part of the year. Should we lock in our bets now that March appreciation numbers are going to be in that 8% range? It's like a roller coaster. Are you sick yet? So sales were down, prices were down. But let's take a look at what happened with inventory. We had 1,683 condos on the market as of the end of February 2023. Now this is a 17% increase in the amount of in inventory compared to February of 2022. That's a lot, but it's still 15.6% below inventory levels in 2021 and 386% below inventory levels in February of 2012. It's the second month of the year and we don't have much data. And the data that we do have, well, it's choppy to say the least. While time will tell, I will say that from these cheap seats, the market is stable. The average sales price year to date is $640,934, which is compared to the average sales price in 2022 of $638,017. Now, onto the multifamily market. If I had to pick a market that I am most bearish in, that's the multifamily market. Why? Multifamily's main attraction is for investors. And when it comes to investing, it's all about dollars and cents. No one buys a multifamily property to lose money on a monthly carry. And with the cost of debt, this is exactly what would happen for a lot of buyers. And the buyers that are looking to buy a multifamily property to have tenants help pay their mortgage, what is really interesting is that in a lot of those cases, the new homeowner would actually be subsidizing some of the tenants rent. We speak to a lot of people each week that want to buy a multifamily because they believe it's going to help them out financially. But in this current market, that is not the case for most properties. Be on the lookout for a video that talks about this as well as the number breakdowns and how all of this works. But in February 2023, there were 268 properties that sold for an average sales price of $651,332. For the past two months, the multifamily market has been in the negative territory year over year. This month, they actually broke that trend, posting a 4.32% pricing increase in the average sales price year over year. So some really great news there. The alarming news is in the trend of the limited sales activity. February 2023 was a 41.4% decrease in the amount of sales compared to February 2022 when 457 units closed. But this 41% is not a one-off. Last month, year-over-year -year sales were down by 39.7%. In my opinion, this is all tied to what I just was talking about with the buyers having difficulty meeting sellers asking prices due to those high costs of leveraging the properties. If an investor can't get the sales number they want or need, then it most likely makes very little sense to sell is they're probably rolling in a monthly return right now. Many years of increasing rents and locked in very low financing rates makes them an amazing investment. All this to say the decrease in sales, well, it makes sense. But let's take a look at what happened here. Interest rates went up. This thereby decreased demand. But the decrease in demand has led to a decrease in supply as the sellers adjust to the buyer's demands. This is what happens when there's no huge need to sell. And as we know, you can't have big price corrections without a decrease in demand and a surge in supply. This is why the Massachusetts multifamily market's pricing is remaining strong and not collapsing. Again, the true story is all about inventory levels. Speaking of inventory levels, let's take a look at what they look like for multifamilies. As of the end of February, we had 585 multifamily properties on the market. Now, inventory levels today are 12.5% above the levels this time last year, but still 17.1% below the levels in February of 2021, when there were 685 multifamily properties on the market. The current inventory levels are the second lowest in recent history. Again, I believe that the multifamily market is the weakest of all markets. It's the weakest, but with the supply being so limited, I say the weakest in, well, the weakest terms. Yeah, I think that makes sense. 
Want to talk about your personal real estate needs? All of my information, it's in the description below. I always love talking about real estate. So whether you're looking to buy in the next nine or 90 days, then I would love to chat with you and just find out more about your real estate goals. Questions or comments about any or all of this market data, then drop me a line in the comment section below. You take the time to watch the video, so I'm always gonna take the time to answer you. An informed person, well, they're a powerful person, so until next time.